Hey, good morning, friends. Guess what today is? Of course, it's Sunday, podcast day. It's 9 o'clock on the West Coast. It's 9 o'clock here in Arizona. It's noon on the East Coast. Hey, thank you for joining me. I'm Brother Mike. Um, I'm with the Arizona Deliverance Center and HardcoreChristianity.com. That's the name of the website. Uh, please remember uh, at the Arizona Deliverance Center, we have all kinds of services available. Um, many pod uh, Zoom services available for women on Mondays, everybody on Wednesdays and Saturdays. We have two live services every week, Thursday and Friday nights at 7 o'clock. All these services have uh, preaching, teaching, healing, and deliverance at every service. It's really amazing. We also have a counseling center in the ministry. If you'll call me at 602-636-5800, um, put you on the counseling schedule. There is no charge for born-again Christians. No charge for born-again Christians. We have a deliverance training class on the fourth Saturday of every month at noon. Um, we have all kinds of other services. Children's Deliverance Ministry is next Saturday. Man, I hope you won't miss that. It's going to be awesome. If you have a preteen that's being demonized, we see them delivered all the time with by the grace of God. So I hope you take advantage of all these services. You can contact me, Mike, at Hardcore Christianity or call 602-636-5800. Um, and uh, thank you for tuning in today. Um, last Friday night, man, I revealed uh, two or three of the most important revelations I ever got from God at Friday night's teaching. You might want to check that out on Rumble and YouTube. But I touched on one thing there that got, got some reactions, you know. So I think I better clarify it a little bit. I was telling everybody Friday night that uh, this is just my experience. In my experience over the years doing a deliverance, I noticed that uh, the deeper a person goes into sin, they have to go that far up into their spiritual walk with Christ to offset it. So in other words, somebody who was a massive sinner, a raging drug addict, a prostitute, a murderer, a pathological liar, an alcoholic, all kinds of different horrible sins, deep-seated sins. I noticed that they cannot, after they're born again, just be kind of like a casual Christian or just like somebody who goes to church who's a, you know, your regular Christian. They can't live like that. And I noticed that the demons keep torturing them and they never find relief. They never find total freedom. So if you were a uh, nine on the scale of sinning, you got to, after you're born again, you got to become a nine on the scale of serving God in order for you to be free. If you're only a two level sinner, well, then, yeah, you can uh, lead a kind of a casual Christian life. It's done all the time at churches and you just kind of float through your Christianity and then you die. No big deal. But if you're a bad sinner, man, you cannot do that. I got that information from my personal experience and from reading, <coughs> pardon me, from reading the Word of God. Check this out. Matthew chapter 11 verse 20 then jesus began well excuse me in that previous chapter 11 jesus is talking about uh, the great ministry of john the baptist and his impact and uh, the revelation john bought brought to the world and then Jesus switches gears, but he stays on the same subject in a way. He says, now he starts to rebuke 
certain cities who had received an enormous exposure to the gospel. Verse 20, then Jesus began to upbraid cities where most of his mighty works were done because they did not repent. Now check this out. As you know, Jesus was uh, born in Bethlehem, raised in Nazareth, but when he started his ministry, after he was baptized and tempted of the devil, he moved. And he moved to the north end of the Sea of Galilee, right near the coast there, in a city called Capernaum. That was his headquarters. That was his new home. And that was his residence until he was butchered and murdered in Jerusalem. And he starts to rip to rebuke the cities like Capernaum and Chorazin and Bethsaida that were near Capernaum. Chorazin was a couple of miles north of north of Capernaum, and then um, Bethsaida was about four and a half miles east of there. So. Jesus did most of his miracles in that area. He concentrated in that area. He used the Sea of Galilee, so to speak, as Uber. They traveled by boat and he hit all of the cities and the cities close to there all along the coast over a, a period of about three years. Remember that? Well, he says here in verse 21, something shocking. Woe unto you, Chorazin. Woe unto you, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works, the mighty works, Greek word dunamis, supernatural power, if the supernatural power which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, those were two Phoenician cities loaded in sin, he says they would have repented long ago in sackcloth, sackcloth and ashes. Then he says in verse 23, this gets, this keeps getting ramped up crazy. I say to you, it will be, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. More tolerable. People don't realize this, but there are degrees of punishment in hell. Not everybody gets the same punishment. And then he says, again, this keeps ramping up. And you, Capernaum, you which are exalted to heaven, meaning he was there, he lived there, you will be brought down to hell. Hades is a Greek word for hell. In, in, in English, we pronounce it Hades. But Hades is the Greek word for hell. Hell is in the center of the earth. Heaven is above the earth. When you die, if you're a born-again Christian, you go to heaven up. And you go. if you're not, you go to hell down there, the Bible says. He says, for if the mighty works which were done in you, dunamis, the supernatural power that was demonstrated in you, had it been done in Sodom, and it would have remained till this day. Sodom, now listen to me carefully. Sodom was a city that was almost 100% sold into sexual perversion. They were so perverted, they wanted to rape two angels that showed up there one day. They preferred the angels over Lot's two virgin daughters. Th this was a level of perversion that was literally shocking. And they're better off in hell than Capernaum, Chorazin, and Bethsaida? They're better off? Wow. Wow.
Verse 24, but I say to you that it should be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. This, this is hard to believe. It's hard to believe. Let me share another thought with you. In Luke 11, Jesus told the people a parable about these servants. Okay? And he says in verse 48, but he that did not know and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with fewer stripes. So he was comparing people who have knowledge. A person that has more knowledge about God is responsible for more. People who have less knowledge about God are responsible for less. People who are more horrible sinners, such as Stalin and Hitler, receive more punishment than people that are sinning at this level. Now, what's going on here? How, how do I see that in practicality? Wow. How's that work? The more truth you get, the worse off you are if you don't take advantage of it. I, I have literally spent years teaching people the deep things of God. I came out of the Assembly of God religion. I watched TV preachers literally for years. I saw how that system worked. And when I got in the ministry in 2005, I decided to go the opposite direction. I shunned how it's done at church or how it's done on TV. I went the other direction. Foolishly at that time, I thought that would make me ex extremely popular, a minister and teacher and so on. I thought I'd have a huge following, but it actually went the opposite of what I thought. I actually got rejected more than them because I wasn't presenting the gospel the way they did it. I would just read the text and go with that no matter what it said. And so obviously when I go out, I don't sign a lot of autographs, and, but it's better to do the right thing in life than it is to have fame, fortune, money, and autographs. Now, those things are stuff that'll perish at the end by the flames of God. When the earth is renovated, everything gets burned up. All the material things of humanity, it's all renovated. It's all done. As in the end of Revelation. So I kind of put it into perspective. I kind of saw a big picture scenario. Now, how's that play here? What was doing on here? I am one of the most dangerous Bible teachers in the entire country. Here's why. If you come hear me teach, you will be getting the deep things of God, deep truths. That means when you're done listening, you know more than you would know if you went to hear a pastor at a church or you saw somebody on TV. Therefore, if you ignore the teachings, you end up worse off than had you not come in the first place. To whom much is given, much is required. The person that didn't know and did wrong 
will be punished at a lower level than the person that does know and didn't repent. They will be punished at a higher level, even though they both did the same thing. It's all based on your previous knowledge. We have a number of people that come to our ministry and have had literally thousands over the years. And they've left worse or they've gotten worse because they came to see us. Why is that? Because I, you know, I don't dress right. No. The more truth you receive, the more you are responsible for it. Let me give you an idea how bad this is. And I mean, this this was as shocking to me as it's going to be to you right now. I was I couldn't believe this when I originally got exposed to it. I was stunned. Mark chapter eight. After Jesus said this about Bethsaida. Yeah, by the way, Philip, Peter, and Andrew were from Bethsaida. Remember that? That couldn't even save them. Mark chapter 8, verse 22. Check this out. Jesus came to Bethsaida, and they brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him, okay? So Jesus is going back to Capernaum. He's on, uh, Bethsaida was, as I mentioned, was uh, about four and a half miles east. Well, he's walking through Bethsaida to go to Capernaum. He's passing through. Well, while he's passing through there, somebody brought a blind man to him. Doesn't say anything about the guy. Doesn't say if he had any faith, nothing. And they begged him. They said, please touch this guy. Because they, the people that brought him knew that if he would touch him, the dunamis power of the Holy Ghost was there and the guy would be able to see again. Jesus, it says, took the blind man. You believe that? He took him. That's the Greek word, epilambanomai. It means to physically grab somebody and pull them, yank them a dir certain direction. He reaches out and grabs a guy and pulls him by the hand. Boom. He's pulling the guy. He's blind. And led him out of town. He spits on the ground, makes a little puddle and anoints the guy's eyes and ask him if he saw anything. Well, this guy doesn't know what's going on. He's probably not a believer. He's struggling with his faith. And he looks out and he sees men like trees walking. The guy wasn't healed. Well, the Lord didn't give up on him. He kept after him. He went through the deal again. The guy looked up. Boom, I see everything clearly. And Jesus sent him away to his house. And he says to the guy, check this out, shocking. I'm in verse 26. Don't go into the town. And don't tell anyone in the town. The maniac of Gadara got healed. Remember that? And all the people came out of town to see him. And when they started to leave, the maniac of Gadara wanted to get on the boat and stay with Jesus. And Jesus told the guy, no, you can't come with us. You go home and you tell your family and friends, you tell them about all the wonderful mercy that God had on your life. God had that on your life. Go tell him about it. This guy in Bethsaida, he tells him not to say anything. Don't go into the town and don't tell anybody you got healed. Why is that? If you are a servant of God, 
and you don't know to do something and you do it wrong, if you are a sinner, you don't know something and you do it wrong, you are treated differently than someone who knows better and does the same thing wrong. Bethsaida and Chorazin had seen so many miracles. It was unbelievable. And the rottenest perverts in Sodom, had they seen those same miracles, would have pre pre repented and the town that was a major metropolitan area back then. I mean, that city would still be alive today, Jesus said. Had they seen all these miracles that Capernaum saw. But on Judgment Day, okay, on Judgment Day, Capernaum, Chorazin, Bethesda would be more severely punished in hell and Tyre and Sidon and Sodom. Why? The more you know, the more you're responsible for. Why do we see people come to our ministry and they get sicker? Why is that? Because when we give them the hardcore, blatant, unfiltered truth, which is what I do, and I've been doing this for years. And I don't care who likes it. Once you get the truth unfiltered, now you're in trouble. Why is that? You are responsible for it. Brother Mike, why are you saying this? I'm talking to the people that come to our ministry and they go home and they get worse because they had the miracle list, they heard the preaching, they heard the teaching, and they don't do it. So therefore, the demons have legal rights greater than they had before they came here. I know this sounds crazy. I know I sound crazy. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. If you know the truth and you don't obey it, your bondage is greater. Your sickness is greater. You die sooner. He told that blind man not to go back into the town because Bethsaida was cursed. The more you know, the more you are responsible to God for what you know. He that knows less, that servant got beaten with fewer stripes. The servants that knew more were beaten with many stripes. Who's the worst person in this category? People that have religious demons. They're number one. Jesus rebuked the scribes, Pharisees, Sadducees. He rebuked them more than anyone. Why? Because they were religious people. They claimed to know the truth, but they were hypocrites. What was Jesus really saying there? Well, a lot. Hypocrisy may be the worst sin of all. Hearing the truth and temporarily receiving it and then rejecting it may be the worst sin of all. That's why Lucifer is at the bottom of the fires of hell. He gets in the lake of fire and he's cooking more than anybody. Why? He knew better than everybody else, and he did worse than anybody else. Human beings are treated exactly the same way. 
whatever a man or woman sows, that's what they also reap. What's the flip side of it? The more truth you receive and implement and keep, the more God keeps giving you. Then you sing that song, fill my cup, Lord, fill it up. The more you receive truth, the more God keeps giving it to you. The more you do deliverances, the greater the anointing comes to you to do more deliverances. The more you listen, the more you get. That's how the system works. The saddest people in the world are the people who get lots of truth, they get lots of teaching, and do nothing with it. Back in 2000 and something like six or something, a couple, an elderly couple from Sun City West used to come to our services. And uh, the woman eventually joined our ministry team. And they used to sit on the front row at the House of Healing years ago. And they sat right there and listened to one teaching after the other. If you look on my YouTube channel, all those early teachings, they heard all of them. They were there every single um, night. I taught once a week at the House of Healing. Didn't hold anything back. They sat through all the teaching. The husband sat through all the teaching. He just sat there and looked and listened. He was a very intelligent man, high IQ. It all went like this. Guy never got born again. To this day, the guy's not saved. He sat there week after week, month after month, year after year. Now, his punishment on Judgment Day will be a far greater than a crack addict in South Phoenix who died under a tree. Well, how can that be, Brother Mike? Well, I just, <laughs> I just told you. The more you get from God and reject it and not do anything with it, the more responsible you are and the greatest, greater judgment you will face. In the deliverance ministry, the more these people receive truth that come to us and not apply it, they go back home. They actually get sicker than they were before they came. Matthew uh, 12 and Luke 11 tells you clearly that when a spirit leaves a body, it comes back to the person. And when it sees that the person is better off, it goes and gets more demons. And they all come back to the person. And Jesus said the last state of the Man is worse than the first. He's sicker now than he was then. What's the overall point of this teaching? That was Jesus' point. The truth is the most atomic, volcanic thing a person could ever receive. Truth. Because once I give you truth, or once you give someone else truth, it's now off of me, it's now on you. Once you give truth to someone else, it's off of you, and it's now on them. Their blood is not in your hands. Your blood's not on my hands. The blood of other people yeah, that they are still on the hands of those pastors at the church or those TV guys and gals. Their blood of other people is still on their hands because God told them to tell them the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and they didn't do it. They told them stuff. They wanted them to hear. Paul called it teachers with itching ears, tingling ears. Once you give someone the truth and they don't do it, it's off you. And now their judgment will be worse than the guy over here you didn't share the truth with. The person that doesn't get any truth 
believe it or not, I know it sounds crazy. They're actually better off than a person that's been in church for 15 years and doesn't apply what God told him or her. Can you imagine that? Woe unto you. You're worse than Sodom. Are you kidding me? Sodom, sexual perversion running every which way but loose? And these people are worse than them? Because they received truth and didn't do anything with it? To whom much is given, much is required. Right? That's what it says in, in, in Luke. I'll read it again for you. It's right here. It's right here in Luke chapter 11, right? And Jesus says, uh, to whom much is given, much is required. The more you receive, the more you're responsible for. But the more you receive and the more you apply, the more God gives you. He never stops giving you. Eh? Remember that story about Wigglesworth? He'd been in the ministry for years and he had seen thousands of people miraculously healed. Most of them right in front of his eyes. He was at a rally one day and he was outside and he had to yell at the people. And there were 3,000 people there. 3,000 people showed up at a church. So Wigglesworth went outside and he stood on a stump and he was yelling at the people, 3,000 of them. And then he was praying. He was praying and asking God, what do I do? How am I going to get uh, these people healed? What's, what's going to happen? And he says, uh, God tells him, have that woman sit on the tree, stand up over there on this tree. On these steps, she climbed up. They put her up on this elevated spot. She was sick. She needed to be healed. And then she put her hand where she needed to be healed. She put her hand there. And as she put her hand there, Wigglesworth yelled at the people to look at that woman and believe God for their healing. And that was the first day that God taught Wigglesworth retail healings. Hundreds and hundreds of people got healed instantly because he knew he couldn't get to each one of them individually. and He didn't know how to do it. Wigglesworth had been given so much and he kept it all and loved it. And then God kept giving him more. But to whom much is given, much is required. Your responsibility goes from here to there when you receive truth and don't do anything about it. I've been working with many mentally ill people for years, as you know, and I have gone over truth after truth after truth with most of them. And I keep sharing truth, truth, truth. And what's exhausting about it is some of them don't apply it. So I have to tell them the same thing over and over again. I have to keep reminding them over and over again. Take the thoughts captive. Replace the negative thoughts with the word of God. Stop listening to demons. Stop repeating negative things out of your mouth. Stop saying negative things. And some of these people I have told that to a hundred times. Okay, You got to have the patience of Job to be in the kind of ministry I'm in. Okay? But the ones that eventually get it receive healing and deliverance. The ones that don't, 
they get worse. I eventually lose them and they're gone. Which side are you going to be? You know what I think? You're going to be on God's side and you're going to do the right thing. I really do. I'll see you next time. Love you.